CBS newsman Bob Schieffer has compiled Bob Schieffer's America. It's a follow up to the best selling this just in. And, and Bob, it's a collection of some of those final moments that so many of us look forward to on Face the Nation every week, correct? Yes, it is. Uh, I wrote uh, 700 of them. I've been uh, uh, writing them back since 1994. I went through and uh, winnowed that down to about 171. I say about 171 because one of them is an ode to a grilled cheese sandwich. I count that as kind of <laughs> half a commentary. So almost 171 <laughs> commentaries. Bob, I have to ask you, you said there were 700. You whittled it down to almost 171. How, how did you go through? Did you actually reread all of those hundreds of, of commentaries you've done over the years? Did you just pick out personal favorites that you remembered? I, I did just pick out personal favorites, and I did go back and read all of them, mm -hmm. and I want to tell you, some of it was kind of sobering. Uh, you realize that some of them uh, really didn't stand the test of time, but I, I picked out the ones, the number one, that were just the ones I liked and the ones I thought were uh, still still relevant. So uh, that's how I did it, and it was uh, it was a very interesting thing to do, sobering, humbling in some ways, but every once in a while you laugh and say, well, I kind of like that one, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm, sh I'm sure the commentaries over the years have, uh, have shown the changes in Washington, and certainly you've been with CBS News for 40 years. You know, uh, you spoke with Harry Smith about the biggest changes you've seen in Washington, and you said security. Uh, but, but let me ask you, you know, change seems to be the, the key phrase, uh, the key word for both uh, presidential campaigns that are going on right now. If you could look at the state of politics, the way it's changed over the past four decades, and say to yourself, okay, this is what needs needs to change first as we go forward. What would that be? Well, I mean, the Congress and the White House, uh, the government, simply has to find a way to address serious issues head on. Uh, too much of the time, uh, we see that the system is sort of broken, uh, that uh, Congress just can't confront uh, the major issues are head on. They sort of nibble around the edges. Uh, it's very difficult to get people to work together. When they have to, they do. You know, after 9-11, uh, the government came together, the Congress came together uh, in a way it hadn't done really since World War II. But that ought not to be the way it is. It ought to be that's the way it operates in normal times, uh, not just in extraordinary times like that. Uh, we're just wasting a lot of money and, frankly, wasting a lot of time by just sort of beating around the bush. There are a lot of reasons for this. But I do think, Jerry, uh, with both John McCain and Barack Obama saying, we simply have got to change the way we do business in Washington. I think there's a real chance that uh, they might do that. I'm not cynical about it at all. I think that uh, whichever of these men is elected, and we right now can't say which one it's going to be, I think you're going to see them trying to turn a page and, and start trying to get people back together again. It won't be easy, yeah. but I think if we've ever, ever had a chance to do it, this may be the time. It is encouraging to hear you say that, uh, you know, looking through the, the themes that the book has broken down into, one of them is vote for, never mind. And some people might look at that as a commentary in itself on, on the two candidates. I mean, is, is it something of a commentary? You know, uh, this time it's different. I think these are two of the very best candidates we've had on either the Republican side or the Democratic side. Certainly it's historical. You have uh, the first African-American, Barack Obama, but you also have a true American hero uh, in John McCain. They have very different approaches, but both of them agree on one thing. The way we're doing it now, we've got to change and improve on that. And uh, I, <laughs> in that, I support both of them, I have to tell you. <laughs> You know, it's, you, as you're mentioning that, I, I am thinking, you know, we both enjoyed your, your reports at the convention. And I, I just have to ask this question, you know, what are your thoughts regarding the comment yesterday uh, that Obama had made regarding, uh, clearly regarding Sarah Palin's comments during her convention uh, when he said that uh, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. I mean, do you think that was a colossal mistake by the Obama camp, by Obama himself? Uh, short answer, yes. Uh, I, I think what Barack Obama was, was talking about, or what he thought he was talking about, uh, and I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here, he was talking about programs. He was talking about uh, the Republican, uh, uh, you know, that the fact that you have Republicans in office now, and you've got John McCain, uh, who's being critical of them and say what they've been doing is not right. But it came out, uh, at least to some people, sounding like he was talking about Sarah Palin uh, and not uh, not about uh, mm -hmm. uh, the platform and and the proposals that they're making. Uh, I guess I would just sum it up by saying I, I don't think I'd have said that. Right, that's, right. That's the way I would put it. 
You know, and then we also talk, you know, the Face the Nation, you, you, you definitely are a news person. Then there it ends with a commentary. Commentaries come under fire very recently here coming out of the conventions, uh, you know, news personalities or I should say uh, cable personalities perhaps have come under fire for blurring the line between news and commentary. Have you done it for so long without blurring that line? Well, because when I do a commentary, it's clearly labeled commentary. It says that right across the screen, uh, right across the screen, uh, commentary, and I wouldn't have it uh, any other way. But when I'm questioning people, uh, I try to play it down the middle. And, and a lot of times what I will do is uh, be the devil's advocate. Uh, mm -hmm. I will take the other side of the story uh, when, they're, when they're making a, a certain point. But, but people know. Yeah. People know when you've crossed the line, and uh, they don't like it. And that's right. the great governor on all of this. Uh, Bob, I'm being told to wrap it up, but I have one last quick thing. My wife is a broadcast journal journalism professor, and uh, any advice for young journalists getting into this business and what they should expect when they get there? I tell you what they should expect. They'll have the time of their life. I can't think of a better way to spend your time if you're curious about how the world works and you're curious about politics. If you enjoy it, it is the thing to do. You'll never be sorry that you did it. It's not for everyone, but I can't think of anything I could have done that I would have enjoyed more. So my advice is get on it. Uh, try to get that first job and get to doing it. You'll find out if it's the life for you, and you'll find out soon enough, and if it's not, go on to something else. All right, Bob Schieffer, thanks so much for your time, and I know everybody here in the newsroom wants to send you their demo reel for some critiques, so look for that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.